what are you working on right now? Like what's your business and what are you working on? Uh, well, first and foremost, I'm a recovery coach. Okay. Um, so that's helping people who are either in the very early stages um, of recovery, you know, maybe they're not quite sure they have a problem or maybe they think they have a problem, but they're not quite sure what to do um, about yeah. that, you know, because, you know, there's a lot of stigma attached to it. Mm -hmm. And so as a recovery coach, um, I have um, the experience in the recovery process yeah. to, to help them, you know, ease them into that and help them find the the model of recovery that works for them you know uh, so it's, it's kind of like bridging the gap so if somebody you know is looking for recovery i'll help them identify what's gonna you know what they want what you know what's gonna work for them in their minds and then we take it from there uh, the the big um issue in that is access uh, for a couple of reasons uh recovery coaching is is relatively uh, a newer field you know maybe a decade old or so uh, and I still get it all the time like what what's a recovery coach yeah. you know and it's like a life coach but it's for people who have addiction alcohol eating you know I, I think people who experience addictions understand what a recovery coach means sure um, but the, the I do, you know, the, the real fact is that everybody's recovering from something, whether they know it or not, you yeah, know, whether they want to admit it or not, you know. Yeah. And so I like how the recovery coaching can morph into life coaching. Uh, and so just bridging those gaps, because when I got sober, you know, I had that big question, you know, life definitely got better. And, and I was like, okay so you know i'm a few months sober i'm feeling pretty good you know i got the fog starting to clear um now what mm -hmm. you know, just yeah what do i do now you know yeah. um actually those so two things go well so like recovery coaching and life coaching go so well together because it's like um you know i know like the 12th step or like the fourth step whatever it is is all about like living that life of balance and then like constructing life beyond the addiction. And so um, it's like that's and that's life coaching. So it's like, I, I feel like they, they go really well together. I, I, I believe so, yeah, because you get a good start, you know, in say an anonymous program like AA or NA or, or even in a more clinical setting like rehab, you know, you get a good start but they don't necessarily teach you how to live, you know, according to your own purpose. Yeah. Um, they'll, they'll let you back out in the world and be like, go get a job till, you know, get a good job, go back to school, whatever, till you're like able to retire and then retire and go do the things you want to do. And I'm like, right. no. Yeah, no. That's, <laughs> that's no. Really not, that not sounds much. like it's going to make me want to drink again. Yeah. You know? yeah exactly like the, 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 real, the real solution is building a life that you love and like and like having a life of purpose and like if it doesn't have the solution like fully integrated into the recovery process then it's incomplete because it's not going to be sustainable no it's not sustainable because a lot of people in recovery are still miserable you know and they don't understand why yeah they're like well i got sober i, I thought life would be better well what are you doing with your life yeah well, go to work you know like I'm supposed to and I'm like and that's that's the key word right there is supposed to you're, uh, you're, you're still doing what other people think you should be doing mm. instead of doing what you're meant for mm. and I I sincerely believe that when you're living your life of purpose um, it, it takes so much of the discomfort out of life totally you know that way you're not getting off at five and just be like man another day another dollar you know yeah. instead of getting off you know instead of your day being over you know and you're living your life of purpose and you're like damn that was fun you know i had a good time today i'm a little exhausted but i'm good you yeah. know yeah and, and you, don't, you don't need you don't feel like you need to like turn to addiction because you have all these other like really good like structures and systems in place in your life and you're just you don't you don't need the there's no empty feelings yeah yeah there's no emptiness to it yeah you know you feel fulfilled and uh 
you know, ultimately, I believe that, you know, all forms of addiction are, uh, you know, they're emotionally based, you know, where we're trying to avoid something or, or life just doesn't make sense, you know, and, and the problem is societal that nobody knows what, what life is supposed to be about. And they certainly can't tell you what it's supposed to be about for you. They can say it, but it doesn't really mean anything, yeah. you know, because they're, they're still trying to figure it out themselves. Right. Um, so, you know, the, the whole life coaching model is, is coming along. It is getting more and more mainstream, but there's still a little bit of, you know, woo woo, you know, some kind of woo woo science, pseudoscience mm -hmm. attached to it. And that's not at all the case, you know, it's just about connecting with yourself and, and, uh, living your higher purpose Definitely. You that you know things things get more peaceful uh, at least they do for me you know yeah, no, I, I, think, I think a lot of people like people don't as you said um like everyone is kind of in recovery in some way although like the people that you're going after that you're trying to help um it's more like oh they're aware that they have a problem so they're kind of farther along i i have a theory that 99 percent of people in america are sugar addicts at least at the least <laughs> so it's like everyone's an addict in some in some way um, uh, I, I think people are comfort addicts to be honest that too it, yeah that for sure you know, if it's comfortable let's let's keep doing what's comfortable for sure unfortunately that that doesn't keep you moving forward that makes you stagnant you know and you know there's one of the sayings i don't know if i completely agree with it but like you know if you're not growing then you're dying mm. you know and yeah I, I do feel that for myself you know uh but and so too many people are just maybe content with getting off work and sitting down and watching dancing with the stars going to bed and doing it all over again right um but that's not for me and that's not for my clients. My clients are the people that are like, like I was, you know, they're like, okay, now what? They want more. Yeah. They want more. They, they got a little taste of, of, of the good life, yeah. you know, and they want more of it. So, yeah. And, and my question is like, how, um, how, like, who are, like, who exactly, I know there, there are people struggling, like who are just coming to realize their, their addiction um or that they need recovery and how exactly do you find them how do i find them yes uh, <laughs> well actually they usually find me um it's, it's and how very, it's a referral um based community for the most part oh uh, you know somebody will reach out to you know talk to a counselor or therapist or or maybe they've gone to to rehab and they're they still you know, they, they need a little coaching and more and more therapists are getting comfortable with the, the coaching model. And so I do get uh, referrals from some of the local uh, rehab centers. Oh. Um, and then just, you know, putting my, my stuff out there, uh, try, trying to do a little SEO magic on, on the website. Um, I'm using Facebook. I've got a, a, a five day challenge. Uh, coming up here uh, in December, cool. and it's a uh, it's about a, it's about identifying your life purpose, or at least getting a little closer to seeing what that is. Um, and then we're going to double down early January and uh, start showing people how to do some heart centered goal setting. Because mm. everybody's got dreams and goals and stuff like that. The, yeah. the the problem is, you know, anybody can make a goal. Uh, but very few people follow through with them uh, because their heart's not in it, you know, right. it's not in alignment with who they are. And so uh, myself and another coach have developed a little process on how we, we believe, you know, can help people understand their purpose a little better and then how to set the right goals. Mm. And are you doing that on social media? Yeah, we're doing that on Facebook. Oh, cool. So, so it seems like you have a lot of like working parts and like, it seems like you're doing well. Like you have, you have a steady inflow of clients coming in. Uh, I wish I had more, uh, <laughs> to be honest at the moment. Um, but I, I do have a lot of moving parts right now. Uh, part of the, the full on recovery coaching side is to 
get it into medium, at least medium sized businesses, um, you know, to so employers can help their employees who have some issues going on. Oh, interesting. So that would that be like another referral community, like similar to the rehab community and like it other would like be because then the referrals would be coming from like the, the HR department. Yeah, right, right, right. I feel like that's your um HR partners. Cause I feel like you have you do have a lot of moving parts and it seems like you have like, you know, you have the Facebook funnel working and you got SEO working and the, it's just like small tweaks that are, that'll eventually get you there and get more clients coming in. But actually what I like the most about what you said is um, these referral communities that you like referrals, obviously everyone knows are the best way to get clients. And, and uh, you have like the rehab centers referring clients to you. And then I, you know, I imagine if you had just a few more of those, like a few more rehab centers or some, some, as you said, like medium sized businesses referring, uh, you know, you know, HR partners referring people to you, um, and having kind of a few of those, it could be kind of a, a, a pretty big inflow of like referrals coming in on a consistent basis. That, that's, that's the plan. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I'm plugged in with other recovery coaches in my area. Um, and, uh, you know, one lady in particular, uh, she was like me, uh, working for a nonprofit doing yeah. recovery coaching. Um, and we just, you know, in a nutshell, we got, we got tired of doing it their dysfunctional way. And so we wanted to do it our own dysfunctional way, you know, and, uh, how we're doing that is we're, we're not taking the, the nonprofit approach. Um, okay. So we're taking the public benefit corporation mm. approach uh, to it uh, because it's not sustainable for me to yes. ha have like five or 10 recovery clients and they're all pro bono. Yeah. You know, that, that's a lot of my time. And then I still have to spend, you know, uh, at least 50% of my time making money and it's just not sustainable for me. And it's not going to do, help me, you know, live the lifestyle that I, I want, you know, I have no illusions. I don't want to get rich doing this or whatever, but I do want to bring awareness and access up and that sure. plugging in with the, um, the business community here in Colorado Springs. Yeah. And, you know, get that, get that going and then, you know, help other people do the same thing in their community. Uh, wait, wait, wait. So you, so you also want to help train other, like other recovery coaches to do the same thing? Yes. Cool. That's pretty interesting. And then, and then you have like an organization that trains recovery coaches and then like, like I, 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 I imagine there's like a kind of, um, you know, a fee there that can keep your business sustainable, but also like have you spread the impact of recovery coaching to more States and more areas. Yeah, uh, I am plugged in with the, the lady I was just speaking of. She is a recovery coach trainer um, certified by the Connecticut Community of Addiction and Recovery, CCAR. They're one of the leaders in the recovery peer recovery coaching field. Um, so she is able to train more recovery coaches, and I'm taking up the mantle of more of the business aspect on how to get it in front of business owners. Uh, and starting from there because you know any any employer with a fair amount of employees they're going to run into it you know right. to I, mean, I mean totally i actually really really like where your where your head is um and like your strategy because you know joint ventures is the best way to build trust and credibility like people people like rave about ads and, and you know facebook ads and all these funnels and that could be a really good way to get clients but it's like you're thinking about offline joint ventures with strong partners like these, uh, like these, you know, these small businesses and these rehab centers. And, um, you know, that to me, it seems like a very, very good way to get referrals and, get, and just have a trust based relationship with big partners that clearly will have an, an info of your target customers. Um, uh, I'm weird question, but I'm wondering, is there such a thing as like speaking at rehab centers? Like, like, like can speakers come in and do talks? Is that something that happens? Most of the rehab centers, they do have um, walkthroughs. 
Uh, so if you're another professional or you represent another, you know, recovery oriented uh, organization, uh, you can get like a tour of their facilities and you can meet their clinicians and, and stuff like that. And most, most all of the uh, addiction counselors, they, they know of recovery coaching. Um, a lot of them have that coaching training as well right. just to add to their arsenal already, but they, they don't do it full time. Mm. Well, they don't need to they're addiction counselors you know right. um but with with that counseling license there's also a lot of ethical concerns and um standards policies laws on what they can and cannot do right. with a client like they can't take a client to an aa meeting you know they can't have a client in their car you know they can't go meet a client for coffee because the client's having a bad day Right, right you know all, of, all yeah. of those all of those things you know that a recovery coach is not encumbered by because number one we are our client's ally in recovery mm -hmm. you know uh, we, for sure. we're their friend we're their ally we're a confidant you know um so we're, we're there for them we're there bridging the gap to recovery but we're also helping them on the lifestyle side too you know uh, and that's where the, you know, more of the life coaching comes into play. Right. Uh, so I, I, you know, I, I got into recovery coaching and within the first 15, 20 minutes of the first class, I was like, oh yeah, this is my jam, mm -hmm. you know? And then I got through that and I was still left with that, that question. All right. Now what? That, that still seems like an incomplete picture, you know? Right. Uh, so I already had a, a, a life coach myself and I started having those discussions like, well, why not keep that going? Mm -hmm. you know? And, and so I, you know, started getting more training in life coaching and, and NLP, you know, just to bolster my ability to help my clients in every area of their right. life, right, right, right. not just recovery. Yeah. It sounds like you have like a ton of these skills and resources that you need to help these clients. And then it's just kind of one of these strategies that you're working on uh, just needs to kind of pay off so that you can get like a steady inflow of these um, like recovery so that you can help as many people as possible. Um, and they're coming to you at a consistent, in a consistent way. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, my impulse is to say like what, uh, like these partners that you've identified, I, I love them. The therapist, the rehab center, the the HR partners. Um, my impulse is just to say like, how can you, how can you create like, I know that they're like passively, they can refer people to you, but how can you more proactively like do speaking engagements or workshops or something along those lines at these places so that it's more like it's not just like passive refer referrals that are coming to you but like you're actively showing up there and engaging with them um physically and, and then you know ha and have it be like more of an active thing that's in your control rather than like sitting back and waiting for referrals to maybe come from these places that's a great question and one i'm already in the process of addressing uh, because I know speaking, getting, getting up in front of a lot of people at once, uh, is, is more beneficial. Uh, I've applied for the, the 1 million cups, uh, the Colorado Springs chapter, oh, cool. uh, which is you get to give your presentation in front of, you know, local business owners. Um, I am plugged in with the better business bureau, uh, here in Colorado Springs. They actually have a branch of their organization um, specifically geared towards public benefit corporations. Um, oh, so once again, uh, being involved with them, I get to speak in front of more business owners. Mm. And I get to ask them those questions, like what does that look like? Me, me getting up in front of, you know, your, your employees. Yeah. You know, how can I get a, a room full of your employees at once? You know, right. And just asking them how that works for them instead of just doing a full pitch. Right. You know? I, like, I like that because it's like, it's really case by case. Like all these. Yeah. They're, they're all going to be different. So I'm asking for their input on, you know, what does that look like to you? You know, if this is something that sounds like you'd like to do for your employees, 
how does it, how does that look, you know, what does that look like for you? Yeah. You know, and then they get to tell me how they want to do it. And then, you know, we go from there. Yeah. No, I like these strategies, strategies a lot. And I think other coaches um, ought to take advantage of this, which is speaking, um, you know, like corporate speaking engagements and then like working case by case in a case by case basis, working on how to come up with the right workshop or speaking engagement for, um, for an organization. Uh, one thing that I, that maybe you, I don't know if you've touched into yet, uh, is, you know, meetup.com. Um, and one thing that's great about it, and I don't just mean it from like, there's two ways to like kind of, uh, get clients through it, but, and one is just showing up to meetups where your clients would attend, which is like these recovery meetups and, and addiction related meetups, uh, and which, which exist. But the other way, and I like this way better is to actually host your own meetup. Um, and that's a good way to kind of have a consistent speaking engagement you know, like once a week or once every other week, you're hosting a meetup related to recovery, like the, you know, the, the, the Colorado Springs recovery group, whatever it is. And then you're hosting these like kind of free workshops uh, related to recovery. And then you're kind of using that as a way to uh, start your relationship, um, which, which can lead to like a client down the line. Um, but that's kind of another way to supplement all these other speaking engagement partnership strategies, which I really, really like. And I think that every, everyone watching this video um, should strongly consider as well for their own business. Uh, so yeah, thank you for these, for these strategies. I like them. No problem. I trial and error. <laughs> <laughs> totally. It's all an experiment. Yeah. And it, it's all in, in, in the, the relationships I do have, you know, I talk to a lot of other coaches um, a lot of other counselors and I just have those conversations with them and I just ask questions you know? yeah and they working? and they freely give me me input too you know almost everybody out there is like hey have you thought of hey have you thought of yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes it's like yeah and then you know <laughs> maybe they give me a different angle on it you know and ultimately that's what coaching I, I don't care what kind it is um, coaching is about conversations. It's about mm -hmm. those relationships. I like that. So, you know, just get out there, connect, you know, cause for, uh, recovery coaching, the opposite of addiction is not sobriety. The opposite of addiction is connection. Ah, that's really fascinating. I like that. That's so, a really great frame. Um, and, and, and I believe that's, that's a, a human kind kind of thing. We are social animals. Um, we're meant to connect. Uh, so we can get out of our own ways, you know, and, and, uh, get, push some of those self-limiting beliefs and embrace our own vulnerability and just have those open, honest conversations with people, you know, the, the horizon is wide open. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, I totally agree with that. And that's, that's a great framework for recovery and just life in general. So thank you very much. Thank you, Matt.